This is part three of the trigonometry section of our aeronautical engineering course. How many of you noticed in part two the goof up I made? I was showing you how you can prove on your calculator that one over the square root of two equals 0 0.707. And what I did was I took my calculator I said 2 invert square root, that gives me the square root 2, 1.414213562. And I said divided by 2 equals 0 0.707106781. What I should have told you is 2 invert square root 2, that gives us 1.414. Then I should have hit the 1 over x which also gives us 0 0.707106781. Sorry about the goof up. My brain was kind of like a CNI dog chasing after a cat there. What I told you was true, but it just wasn't what we were talking about. Okay, let's get on with part three. Okay, we can use trigonometry to calculate the direction and magnitude of a resultant vector. Let's say we have a wing flying through the air. Okay, it's at a four degree angle of attack. Okay, so we'll draw this slightly up. There's our wing, and here's the oncoming air. Okay, hitting the wing at that angle, and this angle is four degrees. Okay, let's say its lift coefficient is 0 0.7, okay, okay, coefficient of lift equals 0 0.7, okay, and let's say its drag coefficient, I'll have to draw this a little bit longer than it really is, let's say it's 0 0.0387 yeah, if you're wondering where I got these numbers from that came off a Clark Y chart that we have actually that was for 4.1 degrees but we're just talking theoretically here so okay the wings lift drag ratio is 18.1 We can calculate that by dividing our 0 0.7 by 0 0.0387, 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.0387 equals 18.0878, whatever, 18.1. Okay. Okay, if this were a fully loaded Cessna 150, flying straight and level, in other words, so that the lift would equal the weight of the airplane, if you're pulling out of a dive, your lift is a lot more than the weight. If you're going into a stall, your lift is less than the weight, but we're going to assume it's straight and level, so that the lift equals the weight. Okay, we could say the wing's lift is 1,600 pounds. And we could say the wing's drag is 88 pounds because the lift is equal to the lift coefficient times a long string of numbers. And the drag is equal to the drag coefficient times the same long string of numbers. So the lift and drag that you get are proportional to the coefficient of lift and the coefficient of drag. Let's write coefficient of drag by that number. Okay, so here's the resultant vector. If we just draw a dotted line over here, the same length as our drag line, draw a dotted line up here, the same as our lift vector, then our resultant will go from there to there. So what we really want to know is this angle. What is that angle? Okay, what we... We know this is a right triangle here. This is the right angle. And this is the opposite side of this angle. This is the adjacent side. This is the hypotenuse. So 
so we can say the tangent, remember Sokatoa? Sokatoa tells us that the tangent of an angle is equal to the length of its opposite side divided by the length of its adjacent side. So the tangent of this angle is equal to that distance divided by that distance. Well, we know what that divided by that is. It's 0 0.0387 divided by 0 0.7. Or it's 88 pounds divided by 1,600 pounds. Because 88 pounds that looks like 881 pounds, BS, huh? there we go, 88 pounds divided by 1600 pounds. Okay, our drag for a Cessna 150, if this were the case, these coefficient of lift and drag, our drag would be 88 pounds with our lift being 1600 pounds. Our lift to drag ratio would be 18.1. We can draw this this unknown angle here. We can call this 88 and call this 1600 or we can call this 1 and we could call this 18.1 or we could call this 0.0387 and call this 0 0.7. Doesn't matter. We'll get the same answer for our angle when we punch it into the calculator. So let's use what the chart gives us, the 0 0.0387, okay, divided by 0.7 equals, okay, that's 0 0.0552857, that should be the reciprocal of our lift to drag ratio, 18 to 1, hit 1 over x, yep, sure, sure enough, 18.1. So hit 1 over x again and get back to my 0 0.055 and all that. So now I want to know what this angle is. If I knew this angle, I could find out the ratio of the sides. But if I knew the sides and want to find the... Well, if I knew the angle, I could just hit the tan button and find out the ratio of the sides. But that's not the case. I know what the sides are and I want to know what the angle is. So I hit invert tan and I get 3.16 degrees okay better draw it over here as I said a minute ago if you know the angle of or you know one of the acute angles of a right triangle you can find the ratio of its sides by just pressing in that angle number and hitting the tan button on your calculator. But if you know the the ratio of the sides but not the angle, you can figure, you can punch in them, that divided by that, and then hit the inverse tan button on your calculator, which in mathematics is called the arc tan, A-R-C-T-A-N. And that'll tell you the the size of the angle. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, 0 0.0387 divided by 0.7 equals that. Okay, we figured out the ratio of our sides. So we hit invert tan. And we found that we have 3.16 degrees. Here we can, we can use a 30-60 triangle to illustrate this. Okay, this is 30 degrees, this is 60. Remember, the ratio of our sides was 2 to 1 to the, oops, 2 to 1 to the square root of 3. Long sides, always square root of 3 times longer than the short side. Okay, so if we hit 10, hit 30, 10, we'll find out what the ratio of 1 to the square root of 3 is. Okay, 30... 10, so it's 0.577, that divided by that is 0.577.
If we hit our 1 over x, we have that divided by that, which is 1.732, which is square root of 3. Hit x squared, we'll get 3. But let's go back to our square root of 3. So if we know that, and we want to find out that angle, we just find out the arc tan of square root of 3 over 1. So we have square root of 3 over 1 on our screen, 1.732. Now we hit inverse 10, and it'll give us a 60, which is what our angle there is. Okay, what we just figured out, let's get back to our wing, this angle between the vertical, which is where the lift vector is, and our resultant vector, which is the vector that has lift and drag as its components. Our angle between the straight up and the resultant we can figure out the angle between our cord and that resultant. And that's very valuable information. An aeronautical engineer needs to know that because he has to put a center of gravity so that it's always in front of this. Let me draw it again here. Okay. The cord is that way. And the resultant vector is that way. It's a little that side of vertical, but yet it's still less than 90 degrees from the cord. We determine that by saying, here's 90 degrees, the relative wind to straight up is 90. Add that 3.16 degrees there, that gives us 93.16, but we subtract our 4 degree angle of attack, Let's see, 90 plus 3.16 minus 4 equals, what would that be? That's 89.16, isn't it? 89.16 degrees here from our cord to our resultant vector at this particular angle of attack. It changes with other angles of attack and okay, we always want that center of gravity in front of there so the tail can push down on the airplane as long as we're talking about conventional airplanes you know, with a big wing in front and a little wing in the back or the tail section in the back, there's the propeller center of gravity is always in front of where this wing lives but if you're talking about one of Burt Rattan's airplanes as a big wing in the back and a little wing in the front his center of gravity is in front of where the big wing lifts. They both lift. And when the angle of attack gets too much, this one stalls before this one does. Instead of having a one lifting and one pushing down on the plane, both of his lift. But that's enough for this lesson. Catch you later.